Okay, guys, so, well, as per usual, uh, took me a while to finish this one, as <laughs> in everything I do, with two little kids and a full-time job, et cetera, et cetera. But I uh, finally finished iteration number two of what I call a paper snippet, because it's a Alboa-style foam wing, not glass. Thought I'd give this thing one more try. The first one didn't do exactly what I wanted to do, though it flew. Uh, okay. I think this one's going to be a lot better. Um, so some changes, some things that are better now with this one, I believe, than the first one. So the first one I did, it was Elmer's board on the bottom layer and uh, Adam's depapered on top. This time I used uh, Ross brand uh, foam board on the bottom layer of the two layer foam wing. Reason being it's it's covered in paper, not, um, Elmer's is basically covered in poster board, which is, it turned out to be really heavy. It was stiff, but it was heavy. And this one's covered in non-removable paper. So I left the paper on both sides of the bottom layer of the wing. And then a uh, top layer of the wing is uh, de-papered atoms. So just blank foam, which I was able to shape into the airfoil, of course. I also, because the first wing folded like 15 throws in. <laughs> um, so I added, you can see a, a vertical carbon strip embedded in a slot in the bottom layer of Ross uh, foam board there. Um, it actually goes almost all the way through and just gets down to the paper on the bottom. And then I put a strip of, um, to reinforce the paper so the, so the rod wouldn't come through. I put a strip of um, thicker scotch tape along that. And it uh, seems like it's going to be really pretty stiff for something that's not glassed in any way. Um, the whole thing this time came out lighter too. Uh, the first paper snippet was about 178 grams all up weight, which flew in a little bit of wind, fine. This one's a hair under 150, which, you know, uh, compared to a production DLG, obviously a um, little bit heavy, but not really. Um, that's pretty decent. So this isn't super crazy heavy. Um, I did the tail a little different too. Uh, Bo is right on this one. Don't cut a slot in your vertical if you're doing a balsa tail. Just glue the whole vertical to the shaft going all the way back to the, almost to the hinge line because my first vertical tail broke where I slotted it and tried to fit it in there better. So this one's a lot more sturdy. Um, I did the same kind of double springs, um, opposing T-springs there on the vertical and the stabilizer. Uh, stiffer springs this time because I'm using KST X06 servos in here, which of course the best you can get but I, i'm tired of crappy servos and these are just they're, they're so far superior i'll take the cone off in just a minute um did the wing the same way no flapper arms but that looks like it has them but i taped them permanently into some camber a little hard to see but about three or four millimeters of camber fixed into the wing since so a flat bottom airflow i think that'll make it uh decent bottom I just I covered up the paper with this really light laminating um, tape that I've had for a while it adds very little weight I mean maybe a couple of grams total but that completely covers the tape uh, the front uh, the leading edge is wrapped in packing tape as well and this time I sanded it a lot thinner on the trailing edge and then actually covered it's hard to see but I covered the trailing edge in scotch tape top and bottom also there you can see it in the light a little bit so it's got it's like razor thin now and the leading edge is a lot better so this is a, this is just a better wing all around um i think it's going to do okay actually balances decently i had to put some lead in the nose um let me take the and uh just some silver tape i had as an experiment let's see how that glints in the sunlight it gives me a little bit of perspective if i get it far away I used to do this on my planes back in the 90s. Um, unlimited ships, when you get a mile downwind, you needed some something to glint on the leading edges or the tips like that to give some a little bit of orientation sometimes, and that really helps. But I had some of that. Kind of offsets a little bit of the weight of the... I mean, it's only like an extra gram of popsicle stick there on the end. <laughs> so, um, let me see. Let me take off the... Oh. 
tone like I've done them before. This is a EPS foam. It's very, very, has a lot of give to it, but it's, it's made out of these blocks I get from Amazon that are made to be kids dice that you paint. And it's like the perfect material. This stuff's awesome. Um, it comes in these packages of these things, six of them for like, I don't know, like three bucks or something. I don't know, but if you could saw it off like I did here, shape it, sand it, then you get a lot of give to it. And I was able to paint it with acrylic paint too. And it's, it's an excellent nose cone, actually. It, like, if you lawn dart the thing, it, it literally just bounces. It doesn't hurt the airplane. It's like a literal bumper built in there. And this is just heat shrink like Boa does over a form and taped together and trimmed up a little bit. Now, that works out cool. I'm going to do a glass cone for the uh, next model I do. Lost foam. But um, under the hood, pretty simple. I went high end this time, though. Those are KST X06s. Now, they're taped up. As per the convention, uh, I'm not going to glue a $40 servo directly to <laughs> any shaft ever. So that's green frog tape over that, which is a really high-end version of uh, some painter's tape that works well and wrapped in um, thread like is the convention. I mean, you can Google that and find it. And then, then glued to the shaft. So if, if something fails or if I'm getting rid of this thing and it breaks, I can literally just slice the tape and pull the server right back off. Uh, these guys, if you're gonna, you really need to use the pulleys, I'm telling you. Uh, this, these things Armsword makes for X08s and X06s, these pulleys, it, they're so much better than using servo arms. Hold on, let me get their transmitter here. These, there's just, it's just so much more efficient. And that's so easy to set up. It was unbelievably, and these servos have so much pull. They're, it's unbelievably superior to the piece of crap I was using before. I will not personally use anything other than KST servos ever again. I just won't, it's worth the money. I highly recommend them. The new AO8s that came out for a bigger ship just look awesome. A little bit stronger version of these XO6s. But these, these things are just fantastic. That's just an AR-410 there. Got the case on, obviously. Uh, the, the lead in the front, embarrassing, I needed about 10 grams. That is a roll of lead tape made to um, weight golf clubs. I don't know if any of you know anything about golf. A lot of times people will stick lead tape on their irons to change the swing weight. That works excellent. Uh, it's one gram per inch. So basically I cut off two five inch pieces of it and just wrapped it around the, uh, and it's got, it's already got adhesive on it. So I just wrapped it around the front of the rod and then I put some Kapton tape over everything. Basically you can see really grun fond of Kapton tape, that stuff, the yellowish stuff there works awesome. No stretch, no residue when you pull it back off. Uh, it works excellent to take things down. And lastly, Wife hooked me up with a new set of batteries. These are one cell LiPo HV batteries charged to 4.35 volts. And as per usual, I slipped it inside a uh, formed piece of um, heat shrink tubing there as a holder. So came together pretty, pretty neatly. Uh, balance is right on about, you see my black lines there, about 40%, which should be just right. Um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, there's a hurricane in the Gulf. Uh, <laughs> it's going to Louisiana, luckily, but it's already raining here in Pensacola. So there will not be any flying today or definitely not tomorrow. Figures. I hate the weather here so much. Florida is so much fun to visit, but if any of you are considering moving here, don't. It sucks. <laughs> anyway, this thing came out nice. I like it. This is gonna be the last paper one I do. This is basically a last test bed for the uh, shape and airframe I'm looking at doing for the more permanent version that's going to be glassed, et cetera, et cetera. And just like before, it's very close to original Go Mini um, plan form, uh, which was the predecessor to the Deviant. Um, very, very close in shape to a Deviant, really, though. It's not much farther off. Um, but anyway, so. I'll fly it when I can, but is what it is at the moment. But there we go.